how are hackers beating multi-factor authentication? We're seeing this attack a lot more often these days and it's been used to successfully breach Microsoft 365 accounts that have MFA enabled and nearly every time the user has no idea that it's happened. The old phishing methods, they would create a fake login screen and they would trick users into providing their username and password and if the users did that, then the attackers would try and log in and if the account had MFA, then the attacker would be out of luck. They couldn't get into the account because they didn't have that second form of authentication. Whether it's a mobile phone or it's a, um, an SMS code or a phone call or an authenticator app. And at the time, Microsoft said 99.9% .9 of these identity-based attacks are thwarted by MFA. And there was a big push to roll out MFA with security defaults. Uh, nearly every tenant has it now. Um, and it's been pretty successful. But now I'm going to show you a quick one-minute rundown on how attackers are breaking into MFA-enabled accounts. And then we're going to discuss what we're doing to stop it. So this is the tool called Evil Jinx that the attackers use to steal authenticated uh, session cookies from users. Now they can generate um, fake links for all of these services here. We've got Facebook, LinkedIn. We're going to look at Office 365 right now. They're going to do a get URL to create a fake login URL for Office 365. And then they'll put that into a phishing email. And if your user, which is the victim here, clicks on that URL, then they'll be taken to this screen here. It looks just like Microsoft 365. Uh, the only difference is at the top, it, you've got login.microsoftonline.com um, with two L's in online. So a lot of people will miss that and they'll put in their password or put in their username. They get taken to this screen here, which has their company branding on it. Then they'll put their password in. This is their password, just so we can see what the attacker will steal. And they sign in. So for the user, it's got their company branding. It's asking them for MFA. The attacker has taken that password and um, when the user completes MFA here, the attacker will also steal the authenticated cookie, which allows the attacker later to log in as that user. So the user thinks they're doing everything right. They're logging in through a, a login screen, which looks just like the company branding. Um, they're completing MFA as they always do. And they're even saying, no, don't keep me signed in because they don't want to keep their session um, active on that computer. So then they're redirected to this screen there, which looks just like the Microsoft Online login screen. They won't realize that anything bad has happened. On the attacker's side, they can see that all the author authorization tokens have been intercepted. So the attacker has now stolen the cookie that then that they can use to log in as the victim. So they run this here. This is the cookie, the authenticated cookie that they can use to access the victim's account. They open up a browser. They go to portal.office.com. They can click on this cookie editor here. They can paste in that cookie. And then they paste it in here. And then they click import. And then once they refresh this browser, they're gonna have full access to the victim's account. So now they're logged in as the user here. We can see that this is the victim that gave away their credentials. They can click on their files. They can browse their SharePoint. They can see their sensitive company data. They can go into their email. They can send email. They can create mail rules. They can do anything uh, that the user can do. They can even open up their OneDrive files and browse through those. So what are we doing to solve this problem? So this is our first line of defense here. It's an open source tool called Clarion. It's designed specifically to address this problem. The user enters their details. Um, then they're taken to this screen where a big warning is displayed. Clarion has recognized they're not on the correct page and warns them not to enter their password. Now this tool does work for now, but it will eventually be circumvented. So there's a few things we're doing to address this. So the first thing we're doing is 24 by seven security operation center or SOC monitoring. Now 90% of these attacks occur outside of business hours. So if an attack occurs and is successful on a Friday afternoon, we need to know about it before Monday morning and that is what this uh, service is going to stop. We're going to do improved phishing protection. We don't want these emails to end up in front of our users in the first place, so we're going to implement some additional AI tooling to help prevent the delivery of these malicious emails. We're going to block more countries by default. We're switching from a block list of high-risk countries to an allow list model. The previous setup was if you tried to log in from a high-risk country, you were blocked and everyone else was prompted for MFA. Now that MFA can't be trusted as it once was, we are going to be switching to an allow list model where only certain countries are allowed and everything else will be blocked by default. 
Now attackers could get around that allow list model by using a VPN. So we're gonna put stricter authentication in place for VPNs with upgraded security licensing to require stronger authentication on a VPN login. So if a user logs in and they're using a VPN to represent themselves as being from Australia, for example, then we are going to have some stricter authentication methods around that to ensure that the user who's logging in is who they say they are. We're gonna be implementing security awareness training. Uh, that's monthly online training for staff to help identify and avoid malicious emails. We're also gonna be doing phishing simulations um, ongoing for uh, all users. Um, there are other methods, depending on how strict you want to go with your security here, and we have some um, methods in place that involve things like hardware keys and um, a zero trust security model. Um, if you'd like to discuss that, um, please contact us on 1300 369 111 or support at gcit.com.au. Thank you.